Okay, so let's continue our discussion of the water cycle. We talked about uh, processes of tanks and flows. Uh, scientifically, they are also called you know, storage and flow or reservoir and flux. Okay, when things move, they are moving, let's say, per unit area, per unit time. So they tend to have fluxes in per hour or per square meter and so on and so forth. That's what we are talking about when we talked about radiation. Now you have to st start to bring together all these concepts of winds, the trade winds, the westerlies, the easterlies, temperatures, how they are distributed, you know, low latitudes tend to be warm, high latitudes are colder of course and we already said that, that winds, trade winds are converging and rising in the low latitudes and when there is rising air it's expanding, it's cooling and it's condensing, forming clouds and raining and so on and so forth. So there are bands of rain on the planet because of the convergence and divergence of winds on the planet. So we'll start with one simple figure. It's called Earth's Intertropical Convergence Zone or ITCZ in our area in India and so on or the UK. In the US they would call it ITCZ. They don't say Z, they say Z and even the French say Z. Okay, this is from Encyclopedia Britannica. Thank you. So what is this showing? This is showing that there is the convergence band and rain band that moves seasonally. Why does it move seasonally? Of course because the sun is moving from one hemisphere to another hemisphere every year during the seasons. <coughs> so th during the boreal summer, remember boreal means northern hemisphere. <coughs> During the northern hemisphere summer, the sun is in the north, northern hemisphere. India is getting heated. Thus now it's really, really, really hot. And we are expecting rain monsoon to start soon. So the convergence band and the trade winds themselves keep moving back and forth with the sun. And we'll see nice animations in the fo uh, following section with some podcasts on this. So, uh, with some animations on this. So if we look at the convergence of the trade winds in July which is the peak of the boreal summer month you can see that the convergence zone is pulled to the north compared to the winter position in some places in uh, the Asian region where you have the Indian monsoon and the so-called East Asian monsoon which are the convergence zones on land. They are often referred to as continental tropical convergence zones or CT CZs but you don't have to worry about that. Just remember that there are reasons why it doesn't move together all the way. There is the Amazon forest here which gets a lot of rain both in the summer and in some parts in the winter. There is West African monsoon here so the rain band is moving to the northern edge of the rain here because you have Sahara Desert here which we'll come back and look at. The monsoon is pulling it all the way to the north because you have so much land heating and low pressure during the summer months and so on. And it dips down here because you have a lot of warm water here. Remember warm waters are necessary for rain and convergence favors creation of warm waters. There are some processes of physics of how this happens. Energy balance again which we haven't talked about. A bit advanced but you can easily imagine imagine that if the land is warm or the ocean is warm there's going to be evaporation obviously much more on the ocean because there is a lot of water that evaporation is going to warm the air above and the air is going to rise and again air is going to expand because the pressure decreases as we go from the surface into the upper atmosphere as the air expands by your basic laws of chemistry on how pressure 
volume, temperature, etc. related to each other. When it expands again, chemistry tells us it will cool. When it cools, it's going to condense the water that's in it. In it. Air parcel is holding the water, water vapor from the evaporation. When it condenses, it's going to form clouds and when it condenses a lot there are reasons why it will begin to rain so warm waters means you will have convergence there and convergence is also causing uh, you know warming so you have to just remember those things so there are reasons why it's pulled further on some places not so far to the north on uh, some other places uh, of course the monsoon requires a lot of water so it's moved way to the north compared to other positions and so on. There is also rain and precipitation over here but this is only focusing on the intertropical convergence zone. Inter means between so between tropics convergence is coming together of the winds remember if winds come together they have to go to zero and then they have to go up into the atmosphere and it's the zone so ITCZ ITCZ of course when the uh, boreal winter or austral summer is uh, happening the Sun is to the south of the equator heading to the Tropic of Capricorn and then turning back and you see that the ITCZ is moved to the north compared to the boreal summer position dips further south here <coughs> or parts of the South America and the Amazon doesn't cross the equator here again there are reasons why this happens that are too difficult to explain for you but if you are interested you can follow up and dips further down here remains to the south and goes north again for some dynamic reasons. We'll see that this rainfall distribution here obviously is much more complicated because it's the monsoon and the ocean is warm so we'll see that in the summer it will not just be raining over land there will be some rain over the ocean also because warm water causes rain depending on how warm it is okay so let's look at an animation of this just to confirm this uh, where is my Oh la la, this is supposed to have a, hmm, okay, here we are. So this is how the ITCZ is moving. This is just an animation of a few years and you can see the months flying by here. We'll see this animation again uh, when we look at what is called a climatology. When we take many years and we average all the Januarys together, all the Februarys together, all the Marches together and so on, we will see how an average January looks, how an average February looks and how the seasons look for an average year over many years that is called a climatology climatology is made by averaging a large number of years something like 30 years okay just remember this uh, but year to year every season is uh, you know seasons are different so each January is not the same but when you look for average January you average remember in the beginning we talked about climate and weather you are sitting here let's say in India or anywhere in the northern hemisphere you're experiencing a summer if somebody asks you will the temperature in December be cooler or warmer than now you will probably say it will be cooler because even though you are young you already remember that winter tends to be cooler in either hemisphere so in the northern hemisphere we are now in the summer or end of spring and in the southern hemisphere they are coming to the uh, end of fall so it will be hot now so that's the climatology you are thinking about average December being colder than average uh, July or May now okay so just remember that's how this works uh, again oops can I do that uh, this is tricky yeah, so you can see as we said the ITCZ moves and you can see that during the summer months June, July, August there is a lot of rain here. India is getting rain, Western Ghats, Himalayas, Chirapunji and Central India and Eastern India, Bay of Bengal and you can also see Bay of Bengal and uh, the Arabian Sea will be slightly different. There is rain over the ocean on land and so on and so forth. So you can stare at this animation for a little bit and you can see 
going north with the sun in the summer coming south with the sun in the uh, fall and winter months and there is also precipitation here but this is not convergence zone there are other processes which cause well there is convergence but they are not intertropical they are happening within the hemisphere and whenever you have convergence uh, you will have rising air expanding air cooling air and you will have precipitation try to carry this word with you precipitation as opposed to rain because obviously here it will be rain at the surface mostly but in the upper atmosphere when it's where it's cold you could have you know ice forming hail forming sometimes you get hail even in the tropics remember especially in the mountains that's ice that's so that's precipitation that's not rain so word precipitation is broader it includes rain and other forms of frozen water and so on and so forth so I will leave this here and we'll come back and relate these the precipitation patterns to the winds we have seen beho before and I've been saying there is convergence 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 and rising air associated with precipitation so we'll look at the winds again and uh, in the following podcast we'll look at the wind animation as well for now we'll look at the winds and say where the convergences are right if air is rising somewhere it has to sink somewhere otherwise you will take up all the air right so when it sinks we said there will be no rain right just like there is rising air expanding cooling raining when it's sinking it's not expanding it's compressing warming a little bit which means no clouds clear skies high pressure remember when s when winds come together there will be low pressure low pressure bad weather high pressure clear weather okay so few things you have to remember because I'll repeat them and they are important basic processes so see you in the next podcast with the winds and trying to relate the winds with these rain bands and it will also explain where the deserts are okay see you in the next podcast